the um, so the core core CPI, uh, we're not racing uh, racing to the upside. Obviously, obviously, uh, we're, we're sitting in a one zero a one point six to one point nine nine range. Um, uh, not a not a uh, not a huge concern here. Uh, not not likely to uh, get the foot Fed all that concern. Now GDP, uh, the second quarter GDP was uh, nice and strong at I guess three point nine percent. But uh, they're talking, you know, the trackers that are coming out with uh, with GDP estimates for the third quarter are somewhere like one percent or below for uh, the third quarter GDP. So we go from uh, down here. Uh, in the first quarter to up here in the second quarter to down here in the third quarter quarter and again not will the fed tighten after a gdp quarter comes in at one one percent or below um hard to see um the thing about the, the gdp here in the U u.s for those uh people t for you uh people to understand is that what the uh, what the u.s does in their gdp it's different in, in different um in different uh, countries, but uh, the um, the GDP is calculated by taking the quarter on quarter change and then annualizing it. So just think about the quarter on quarter change for something like four uh, percent is one percent change from the prior quarter, and then you annualize it. So you say one quarter is one percent, so four quarters is going to be equal to four percent um, or three point nine nine percent, close to, close to that, and that's the way they they get it. So something like uh, 1% growth is going from a 1% uh, GDP quarter and quarter change to a 0.25% GDP change. It's, you know, it's the same quarter of what it was the prior, prior, the prior quarter, but, you know, 0.25% GDP growth, not, not a whole lot of GDP growth there. So the Fed's going to have a difficult time uh, justifying it from GDP perspective. Uh, the core PCE, uh, this is another major uh, a measure of inflation, 1.3%, uh, 3%, so lower than that 1.9% that we saw on the core P CPI. Uh, so uh, no no concern uh, there from inflation on that perspective. Uh, we saw existing home sales come out last week uh, better than expected. And, and this, is, this is a bright spot as far as... Um, uh, the economy goes, or one of the bright spots as far as the economy goes, is that home sales are, are increasing, uh, or existing home sales are increasing, um, at least. And uh, so they're near, near high levels, but the uh, prices uh, started to come come down. And um, this seems, uh, what, what typically happens here, um, if you look at the uh, medium sale price here, uh, is that you get a spike into June and then things start to uh, come off and then you get a spike and then you get, get uh, into June and then the price starts to come off. Um, pretty, you know, I mean, does this look uh, very uh, similar to what we see uh, every, every year? Uh, is this a uh, price decline more than... Um, what we're seeing so far here, we obviously uh, may see a little bit further more to the downside. But this move to the upside was better than this move, uh, not as good as this move, uh, uh, and better than this move right here. Uh, but uh, prices overall um, in, in the um, housing market has rebound, rebounded very nicely since 2012, uh, moving up by about 44.57%. Uh, now, we don't see what declined through here. Here, uh, that, that came before. Uh, this uh, month month here, but uh, I can uh, I can tell you that the uh, price did decline through there. So we're just getting a, we're getting a rebound in the price prices here, but nevertheless a pretty good um, a pretty good you know more money in the consumers' pockets, which is always a good good thing. So you know that made you know that's a bright spot. But we saw yesterday new home sales come out much weaker than expected, um, and not much change in the home sales um, going back um, well to. 2014. This is an annualized uh, sales pace, uh, so um, we're we're kind of back to those those um, higher those those levels from 2014 2013. But overall, um, not too bad. Uh, but we are but the constru construction industry again. We don't see what happened. The decline down down through here, uh, but you know, and we've seen a steady increase um, from the 2011 low to the high. But um, it, it's well off of, I think we are down up to a million or so level uh, annualized uh, new home sales. And that that is a, a um, you know, construction jobs were big, uh, is, is a big, was a big sector of growth and incomes for um, those types of, of workers that make uh, decent money. So the construction industry still uh, hasn't recovered fu fully and um, 
are um, are in trouble, nevertheless, relatively to where we were in 2011, 2012, 2013, and 14. We're kind of at those levels or just above those levels, so not not too bad. The medium sale price also moving higher, similar to what we saw in the uh, a new home home sales. Less of a seasonality uh, thing thing that we saw in the um, uh, in, the, in the existing home sales. Uh, the, in new home sales, uh, people buy new homes. Uh, you know, they build new homes. There, uh, it's it's less of a you know we're um, we're in the middle of the school year, so uh, or school is starting. You know, or that spring sales season where you get that push up into into June, and then you get you know things start to move off as um, as people get settled for the school year. That's why existing home sales have that seasonality that goes along with it. Okay, so I understand that. So um, housing, I guess it would be, you know, if the Fed were looking at the economy or if we were looking at the economy, then housing housing is a bright spot of the economy, despite the little weakness, um, the, te- the weakness in the um, uh, recent um, existing home sales uh, data. Employment, employment is one of the uh, uh, the major bright spots. And, and if I were, you know, I went back and thought, well, if the Fed were to tighten in October, what would be it, it that would cause them to tighten? Well, it's not inflation. We know that, but uh, but it, it potentially, uh, but but it could be employment, and employment uh, situation is, uh, has had a steady, steady, steady decline down to five point one percent unemployment rate. Um, that's there was a time when the Fed was saying if the rates go, or if the unemployment rate goes below, I think it was seven percent that they would sit there and tighten. At that point, this is when rates when unemployment was above ten percent. Um, that if it got to seven percent, that's when they'd start to take out the tightening. So we've gone another uh, a big, big you know way in a steady decline down to the five point one percent that currently exists. So um, you know, and this is what the Fed you know when they say I expect to see lift off, it's because employment employment is getting tighter. Um, they expect that wages to start to continue to start to go higher. And if wages start to go higher, that's going to lead to uh, inflation, and we we see two uh, percent or two percent inflation down the road as a result of wages uh, move, moving higher. Well, um, that may be the case, but when you have GDP growth of one percent, and and the risk that maybe there's a global uh, slowdown as well, I'll talk a little bit about that that later. Uh, that um, that uh, the you know the unemployment rate. May not have the uh, continued momentum to the downside, or that brings that that question of whether or not it could happen or not um, along along the way. And this is a non-farm payroll uh, change in non-farm payroll, and the uh, this is a 12-month average of the non-farm payroll, 229,000. Uh, but we're seeing a decline in the non-farm uh, payrolls um, uh, over the last few few months. And uh, certainly, you know, compared to 2014, where uh, most of the months were above this uh, 229-ish type of line, this year uh, we have most of the months below that 229. So is that a concern for the Fed? And the Fed can uh, and has um, uh, in their speeches since the 142,000 last month, had comments to the uh, effect that, well, uh, with the unemployment rate of 5.1%, we can't add 200,000 jobs because we're already at full employment or we're near full employment. And so there's only so many jobs that can be added at any one time. Time Now, you know, when you add jobs to the, um, you know, it, it, you, you would think like, well, we added 142,000 jobs in, you know, last month that seems like a lot of new jobs and we've had this continuation above zero percent uh, going all the way back to september or of 2010 so every month we've added 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 jobs but you have to remember that there are new people entering the labor force every year new college grads new new people moms were you know moms or dads working working um entering the labor force to get higher income because the middle class is being squeezed um and uh, and so there is a there is a natural addition addition to job to to the employment ranks every uh, month. 